Okay, it's incredibly muddy. We've had a lot of rain. It's mid-March in Kansas. It's a nice day. I decided I was gonna do a Dakota fire hole while I can actually dig out here without a rock hammer and chisel. Otherwise, it's clay-based dirt. When it hits high summer and it starts getting hot and dry, it sucks to dig. So, we're out here in front of my shelter, which has weathered pretty well through the winter. I was kind of surprised. That's my kiln and fire pit, future oven right there. And this will be the Dakota fire hole right here. We are, what we're gonna do, titanium trowel I've got. This would be the easiest to dig a hole about so big around two holes next to each other. So I just stuck a quick handle in it. We'll dig this mess up. Might not burn it today, but we'll get it set up to where we can. You can see how how this dirt is. Now you can actually, if you don't have anything like this, you can actually do this with a stick. It'll take you longer. Sharpen a good stick, strong stick up and start chipping it out and digging it out with your hands. I figure I'm gonna be fairly muddy before this is over. But this was done to cook in. You had two holes that went down side by side into the ground, then at the bottom, they had a channel across. It formed basically a U if you'd cut it lengthwise between the two holes. So what it did was it kept the fire down to where you couldn't really see it. And it kind of acted like a rocket stove. Made it burn less smoky. You don't want to get the hole too big because you'll need to span it with something to put, if you're going to cook on it to put like your pot on or something like that. But you don't want it too small either, otherwise it won't draw well. We start a second hole. Just like the first. Now the only problem with these in the rain is they tend to fill up with water. Which is what it is. Ain't a whole lot you can do about it. It's like everything else. You just gotta be flexible and figure out other things. That's why knowing just one or two tricks may be good for an extraordinarily short period of time in certain circumstances. But if that's all you know in the long term, you're probably gonna die in the woods.
Okay, that's the Dakota fire hole. There's a, this wet clay is kind of entertaining to dig in as you can see. The um, hole across the bottom is probably the size of my wrist, all told. Just a second, we'll see, because I'm gonna shove the camera down there. But this side's a little deeper. That's the side my intent is to have the air go in. That way, if there is a little bit of water, it'll head towards that side instead of where you're trying to build the fire. Otherwise, as we all know, building fire and water is kind of entertaining sometimes. But it's not real pretty, but it'll work. I like when I see in groups, I use people that are always, well, just do this, just do this. That usually tells me they probably haven't done it. If they think it's super simple and they're going to knock it out in about two minutes, depends on the soil you're in. But in this stuff, this time of year, it's easy digging. If we waited till it was summer and it was hard, like I said, I'd have been out here with a uh, bar and a pick and everything else trying to get down in there. So something like this, you'd want to set up in conditions like this at your permanent site, and that way you have it. And then as you use it, you can smooth it out and make it a little better, however you like. This stuff you can take, since this is a heavy clay, it's gonna end up probably behind the rocks in the shelter, or I may actually try to knock a few bricks out of it and fire them and see how they work. But it's, it's so clay that you can actually use it for things because it, it holds its shape when it's wet so that when it's got enough clay in it, when you fire it, I think it'll stay that way. But it's got enough vegetable material in it that I don't know, I don't think it would do good pottery or anything along that line, but if you're using it for a brick or something like that, or you know, the base for a oven, things along that line, I don't think it really matters. Okay. That little titanium trowel did quite nicely. It's gonna need a bath, kind of like me. But that's no big deal. Water's ha water can be had. It's falling out of the sky this time of year. A little soap. Considering the virus that's going around, soap is probably a necessity anyway. Okay, now. This is the fire end of the Dakota fire hole. And that's the air intake. You can see it's just two holes in the ground. And when you go down into the dirt we're going into the mine i don't see how well you can see in there but that was looking across the hole if we go the other way that's sitting in you're sitting in the hole now and right there that's what you're seeing is my hand reaching across the air hole that's where the air goes across once you get the fire going Okay, I'm up here where I dug the Dakota fire hole. This is one hole. It has stuff packed over it. We're gonna light it. These things will, this one will smoke a little while. It rained really bad last night. You can see the standing water around. It's muddy as crap. The grass is wet, so I'm gonna cheat on lighting the fire. So this might be a trick to get going. We'll see how it works. The idea is to build the fire in the hole, but it was so wet that I didn't think it was going to work. It pulled the moisture out of the wall, so I'm going to build the fire on top. I have wood down in it and stuff, so we're going to let all this collapse down into the hole. I keep beating it as it goes. I built this up by my shelter, so I haven't done one of these long-term repeated fires in one. 
and as clay as our soil is, I'm thinking it might it might make it kind of permanent. So this is going to be kind of an interesting exper experiment over time. You can hear it hitting the water and the wet mud down on the bottom. I think it's going to steam a lot until it gets it hot enough that it cooks out most of the water. That might take a while. <laughs> 